Good evening. I would like to call to order the Lake Havasu City Council regular meeting on Tuesday, May 14th, 2019 at 6 p.m. We'll have an invocation by Pastor Ryan Speakman from Living Word Family Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by the Lake Havasu City Military Moms. If you turn on, just there's a button in the center. Yes. This thing on? Hey, there we are. Yay. So thank you for having me. Always an honor and a privilege. So. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for tonight, Father God. We just thank you for your presence here tonight, Father God. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for a special blessing over uh, Mayor Sheehy and Vice Mayor Lane and all of the council members for uh, being here and making this effort to um, govern and be authorities over our city. Uh, I thank you for special wisdom and understanding over them that they make righteous decisions for our city, Father God. I thank you for each one here that they are here because they have a heart for Lake Half Sioux City. We all love this city and we proclaim this your city, Father God. This is a city of faith. This is holy ground. Uh, Father, we pray for special protection for uh, our police department, special blessing over um, our police captain who's here tonight, uh, the fire ca captain, the um, fire department, all the emergency responders in Lake Half Sioux, just special protection over them in Jesus' name and a blessing over them for all the city workers, protection and a blessing. Any spirit of darkness that uh, wants to come against our city, we say no in Jesus' name. Again, this is holy ground. Father, we just uh, thank you for blessing this meeting, spirit of peace over this meeting. We say your kingdom come, your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And we ask, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We have military moms back there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we'll now have uh, the military moms would like to uh, share a little bit about what your organization does and uh, give us an update. Okay. Um, well, one of the things that we'd like to tell you about is we have a Get Some Tour that is um, May 24th, next Friday. Uh, doors open at 6, uh, comedy show starts at 7, and the concert starts at 8.30. Uh, it'll be, the comedy will be by Tim Colseri from Full Metal Jacket. The concert will be by Matt Ferris. We will be raising funds for the Military Moms, the Disabled American Veterans of Lake Havasu, the Havasu Community Health Foundation, and the Marine Corps League. Um, it'll be held at the refuge, and if you're interested in tickets, I hope to hear from you. Hi, I'm the president of Lake Havasu City Military Moms, and I'm also the secretary of the Veterans Resource Team and a mentor coordinator of services for our Veterans Treatment Court. What Military Moms does is we are an active participant in our Veterans Resource Team and all the money that is so graciously donated by the citizens of our community is spent to, um, first thing we do is we send out Girl Scout cookies once a year. It costs us $2,600 a year to send those boxes to our troops over that are deployed. They're just now receiving them and we're getting, if you look at our Facebook page, you can see a lot of really, really happy, smiling faces that are out there in the desert with their boxes of cookies. So it, it's really rewarding to see that. Um, we also help our veterans here in town that may need their electricity paid, their rent paid, food, gas, a ride somewhere to one of their appointments, a ride to and from the hospital if they're having a procedure. So. Um, 100% of your donations do go back into the community, and we are very blessed to be here in Lake Havasu because everyone here is so very, very generous with our veterans. They help us take very good care of them. Um, that fits in with the Veterans Resource Team, which is all the veteran organizations in town, along with a couple of our car clubs that very graciously donate money that's donated to them when I email them begging for money to help one of our veterans that needs a hand up. So that's pretty much what we do. And I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything like that, I can answer them. And then if you don't, thank you very much for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Does any member of the council have any questions for, for the military moms? All right, well again, thank you for all you do for our community. Thank, thank you for being you. here this evening.
All right, uh, the next item on our agenda is the roll call. Ms. Williams, if you'd call the roll. Council members Cal Sheehy. Here. David Lane. Here. Jenny Koch. Here. Gordon Grote. Here. Michelle Lynn. Here. Donna McCoy. Here. Jim Dolan. I am present. Thank you. All right, uh, number five on the agenda is the call to the public. This is the opportunity where citizens can address the city council on any matter uh, within the jurisdiction of the city. Uh, your comments will be limited to three minutes uh, or less. If you wish to address an item that's already on today's agenda, we recommend you wait until that item uh, comes up on the agenda so we can have a two-way conversation. Uh, otherwise, we'll be able to listen intently to your comments during the call to the public, but since they're not agendized, we wouldn't be able to have any response to those. Uh, there is a light indicator box at the podium. Uh, green means you have your three minutes, uh, yellow means you have one minute left, and uh, red is when the three minutes is up. You don't have to sign up to talk at the call to the public, but we do have one person do so. So we'll start with uh, Ms. Christine uh, Simmons, if you want to make your way to the, the podium um, and uh, use your time for a call to the public, and then after that, anyone else can make their way to the podium. Well, hello, Honorable Mayor and Vice Mayor and all council members. I appreciate you hearing me tonight. I emailed you about last week or two ago about Tannerite. That's what I'm talking about this evening. It's a very explosive subject. I'm representing the homeowners, 99 of which I have signed signatures, which you have a copy of. Actually, I have the original. <laughs> now, uh, this is my friend uh, Joan Marshall, and um, she has experienced the wonderful sounds of those explosive targets, and she's my Vanna White this evening. Um, I, I'm here because we, our forefathers who designed the city, Lyle Masdorf took me by the hand and gave me a little history lesson that McCulloch had a vision, and he had on his very original little plans of the city, an equestrian area. And I don't know if you have any idea how many home owners and horse owners we have in Havasu. And they are no longer able to recreate in the desert where it used to be safe for them to ride their horses without guns blazing and bullets flying and now explosive devices. So we're trying to seek back that picturesque desert home that we have and preserve the habitat. It's amazing they use cactus for targets. It's really sad if you go out there, be safe. <laughs> uh, I talked to Barry Sullins, he's our ranger. He's informed me that blowing up this tannerite is against the law. It is a class A misdemeanor. You go to federal court. If we give the license plate of who is blowing up the Tannerite, they will go knocking on their door. Ms. Simmons, yes. uh, you, you're addressing the council, so just oh. yeah, please address the council um, okay. and a call to the public. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a quote from Chief Doyle. I saw him here. Uh, he was living on Kicking Horse at the time, and he heard this huge explosion, and he ran out thinking it was his neighbor's house that just exploded. No, it was Tannerite in the desert. A four pound size is called. Uh -oh. oh, a four pound size is called the earth shaker. You have a packet in front of you. I would like to see it banned in town. When you buy Tannerite here in town, they go, oh, it's okay to go explode it up at the top of Bison, where all our homes are, where all our horses are. This is unfair to the customer. They're misleading them. And when the customers start getting ticketed by Barry Sullins and our rangers, they're going to be very disappointed. So I think, why are we selling it if it's against the law and could cause a fire? And our homes are right there. So please take a look at the information. We have a reporter here that came to my house. He got some interviews with some of my neighbors. And hopefully you'll see something in the newspaper. Thank you all. Thank you. And if anybody wants to sign the petition, I have another one out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the city council on any matter during the call to the public? Seeing none, we'll close the call to the public. Item six on our agenda is the consent agenda. Would any uh, member of the council want to remove any of the items on the consent agenda for uh, additional discussion? No. Mayor. Councilmember Koch. Motion. Yes, please. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. 
We have a motion from Council Member Koch and a second from Council Member McCoy. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Item seven is correspondence, communications, petitions, announcements, and the city manager report. Item 7.1 is to announce the vacancies on the Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. Ms. Williams. Mayor and City Council, there are a number of vacancies on Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. This listing is those of the current and upcoming vacancies. Airport Advisory Board, one regular pilot member. Board of Adjustment, three regular members, three alternate members. Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, two regular members. Planning and Zoning Commission, three regular members and the Public Safety Personnel Retirement System, one regular member. Anyone interested can pick up a packet at City Hall and they are also available on the city's website. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 7.2 is our city manager's report. Mr. Knudsen. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'd like to start off tonight's uh, city manager's report uh, by recognizing some, uh, some leaders in our community. Uh, Mayor Sheehy, you and I had the honor of accompanying the Youth Council at the uh, Center for Future Arizona Democracy Final Showcase. It was in Phoenix and it was on uh, May 1st. Um, these leaders did a great job representing Lake Havasu City and they teamed up with uh, Havasu Community Health Foundation and hashtag uh, you matter to raise awareness for mental health in our community. They took home first place in a competition amongst their peers in the state of Arizona. They competed with Avondale, Tempe and San Luis. Uh, at this time, I'd like to play a short video highlighting their journey and uh, call the members of the Youth Council to the podium to, so they can tell us about, uh, about their journey. We are the Havasu Youth Advisory Council, and this is our journey through the democracy process. When we were asked to compete in democracy, we were eager to make a change in our community through the help of CFA once again. After learning about the design thinking process and relating it back to our community, we talked to our citizens. We had a few ideas floating around, but we didn't have a focus. Then this happened. Hannah was a 14-year-old girl, a classmate, a friend, and loved by many. Hannah and her mother were on their way home on September 17th when they were shot and killed due to a mental health in the family. We lost a family seven months ago due to a mental health issue, and maybe this could have been prevented if we knew the signs and symptoms of this disease. The loss of Hannah was our drive for advocating for mental health. After Hannah's death, we felt the need to look into why something like this could happen in our own community. We spoke with organizations, community members, city council members, and our teachers. Yeah, to find somebody to talk to, um, go out and walk. Uh, Clear the, clear the mind a little bit by restructuring your thoughts. That is the only way that you can get through situations like this is communicating with somebody in some fashion. The key is to just uh, be able to provide them with the services that they need, get them in, into somebody who can help. We also appeared at our local radio station to market our idea and get feedback from our community. By doing this, we found that many organizations did support the advocacy of mental health, and through collaborating with them, we could strengthen our impact. It was clear to us, a severe lack of resources for mental illness services was our community need. Using the skills that we had learned during our design thinking process and with help from our mentors, we created a problem tree to clearly visualize our issues at hand, as well as the symptoms they created. By doing this, we were able to come up with solutions that could target each issue and, in effect, each symptom. After months of looking into viable options, we landed on one that seemed to fit our issue. Our solution was to team up with the Havasu Community Health Foundation, hashtag you matter, and our city council to put on a community engagement event addressing mental illnesses. Together, we brought in Katie McPherson to talk about the role social media and technology can have on our mental health. To measure the success of the night, we had attendees complete a pre and post event survey. And throughout that event, we had the chance to interact with our community, learn from them, and create a space with no stigma. Although this project was a big undertaking, the design process and tools at hand made it not only impactful, but easy. The Democracy Competition is a great platform to test our ability and to execute real value in our community. The process makes us more driven to become civically engaged. Good evening, everyone. 
Um, we just want to say thank you um, for helping us with this opportunity, and we're so thankful that we got to work with all of you and work with leaders in our community. So thank you. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Again, nice job. On April 26th, Arbor Day, the city celebrated with the Havasupai Elementary School by planting trees on the island multi-purpose path. Mayor Xi proclaimed the day Arbor Day in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and presented the proclamation to Craig Geary, our public uh, works field supervisor. The kids had a blast. Also on April 26th, Vice Mayor Dave Lane attended the award ceremony for the uh, Science Olympiad. It was sponsored by Altice um, and Sunlink, held at the uh, ASU Lake Havasu and, and assisted, and uh, Vice Mayor Lane assisted with the handing out the medals. The Science Olympiad featured a STEM competition with students from all of our local elementary schools showcasing their skills and ideas on how to improve the future. Mayor Sheehy and Vice uh, Mayor Dave Lane uh, attended the end of the year uh, PACE or Patriotic Adventures in Constitutional Education program and ceremony on April 30th and May 1st to shake hands and congratulate first through sixth graders that completed the program from Starline, Havasupai, Oro Grande, and Havasu Preparatory Academy. Because it's grown to such a large club over the years, the organization had to host the event over two nights. The PACE organization is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization in Lake Havasu City dedicated to teaching patriotism among, amongst our youth. PACE has provided free after school classes for the past seven years. And the classes feature instruction about the Founding Fathers, famous quotations, patriotic songs, and an introduction to the U.S. Constitution and citizenship. Uh, Vice Mayor uh, David Lane attended the uh, annual Elks Swim Day at the Aquatic Center on May 4th. And they presented uh, the group with a proclamation to celebrate the BPO Elks National Youth Week. Uh, Mayor Xi proclaimed the week of May 5th through May 11th as Municipal Clerks Week in Lake Havasu City. The Municipal Clerk is the oldest, am uh, oldest among all public servants and provides the professional link between citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at all levels and serves as the information center on functions of local government and the community. We appreciate Kelly Williams, Marcella Aquiles, and Shannon Davis in the City Clerk's Office. We rely on their professionalism, neutrality, and partiality and rendering of equal service to all. Uh, we can't do it without you. Uh, this week we celebrate National Police Week and the important role our, our uh, local law enforcement pay, plays in the safeguarding our rights and freedoms in this community. And tomorrow we recognize the Peace Officers Memorial Day by lowering our flags uh, to half staff in remembrance of law enforcement officers that were killed in the line of duty. We greatly appreciate the devotion of our law enforcement professionals. In honor of National Police Week, Mayor Sheehy would like to present a proclamation to Police Chief Dan Doyle at this time on behalf of Lake Havasu City. All right, uh, today we're gonna be doing a proclamation from my office, Office of the Mayor, proclaiming this National Police Week, May 12th through May 18th, 2019. Whereas in 1962, President Kennedy proclaimed May 15th as National Peace Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. And whereas the Lake Havasu City Police Department plays an important role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the citizens of our community. And whereas Lake Havasu City Police Department was founded in July of 1979 and in a relatively short period of time has grown to become one of the leaders in progressive police services in the state of Arizona. And whereas Lake Havasu City Police Department members possess strong values that emphasize ethical behavior, principled decision making, and unparalleled commitment to the community. And whereas it's important that all citizens know and understand the problems, duties, and responsibilities of their police department, and that members of our department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property protecting them against violence or disorder, and protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression or intimidation. 
Now, therefore, I, Cal Sheehy, mayor of Lake Havasu City, Arizona, do hereby proclaim the week of May 12th through May 18th, 2019 as National Police Week in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and urge citizens to join in commemorating law enforcement officers, past and present, who, by their faithful and loyal devotion to their communities, protect us through law and order. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next week, we uh, celebrate and recognize our, our National Public Works Week, and that's from uh, May 19th through uh, May 25th. And this is our opportunity to, to show our appreciation to our local public works professionals who are engineers, managers, and employees at all levels responsible for protecting and maintaining our water and wastewater systems, our airport, our Havasu Mobility Transit Program, our streets, our washes, traffic operations, vehicle maintenance, parks, and public buildings and grounds. Thank you to all of our uh, Public Works employees for all your hard work. Um, we have a fun picture here and, and uh, to talk about our Parks and Recreation uh, program. We're asking uh, our residents to slide into Parks and Recreation in either person or online to register for many activities available for kids and teens this summer. The registration opens on Monday, and that's uh, on May 20th. It'll open at 5 a.m. online and 7 a.m. Uh, in person at the Lake Havasu City Aquatic Center. If you're registering online, we, uh, we ask that you ensure the login credentials and everything is going to work before that, uh, that uh, takes place on uh, Monday morning. If you have any issues, uh, please check with them and then check with our staff this week. We're available to help, uh, to help you out with some uh, login assistance. Space is very limited and the programs fill up very, very quickly. So for more information, please contact, contact the Lake Havasu City Parks and Recreation Department at 453-8686. Uh, the Mayor and Council, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do any members of the Council have any questions for Mr. Knudsen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to uh, number eight on our agenda, the public hearings. 8.1 is a Series 12 restaurant liquor license, Mud Shark Brewery, uh, 1095 Aviation Drive. Ms. Williams? Mayor and City Council, Scott Allen Stocking has applied for a Series 12 restaurant liquor license for Mud Shark Brewery located at 1095 Aviation Drive. All posting requirements have been met, all fees have been paid, and no objections were received. The location is properly zoned for a Series 12 restaurant liquor license. Staff recommends approval of this liquor license. Happy Thank to answer you. any questions. Thank you. Do any members of the Council have any questions for Ms. Williams? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the Council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember McCoy. Motion. Yes. I move to recommend that the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control approve a Series 12 restaurant liquor license for Mud Shark Brewery at uh, 1095 Aviation Drive. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember McCoy and a second from Councilmember Koch. Is there any further uh, discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.2 is discussion and possible action, if necessary, to comply with open, excuse me, to comply with Arizona open meeting law following the executive session regarding annual evaluation of the city manager. Possible actions include, but are not limited to, finding of satisfactory or unsatisfactory performance, salary adjustment, or any direction or action necessary to place an item on a future agenda relating to the city manager's evaluation, salary adjustment, or employment agreement. Do any members of the council have any, any comments before we open the public hearing? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, motion. Vice Mayor Lane, yes. Based on the favorable outcome of the evaluation of the city manager, I move to direct city staff to draft an employment contract for the city council's consideration at the next city council meeting. Second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Lane and a second from Council Member Dolan. Is there any further discussion? We are ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. 
Thank you. Item 8.3, discussion and possible action if necessary to comply with Arizona open meeting law following the executive session regarding the annual evaluation of the city magistrate. Possible actions include, but not limited to, finding of satisfactory or unsatisfactory performance, salary adjustment, or any direction or action necessary to place an item on a future agenda relating to the city magistrate's evaluation, salary adjustment, or employment agreement. Uh, do any members of the council have any comments before I open the public hearing? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, motion? Yes, Vice Mayor Lane. Based on the favorable outcome of the evaluation of the city magistrate, I move to direct city staff to draft an employment contract for the city council's consideration at the next city council meeting. Second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Lane and a second from Councilmember Koch. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.4 is discussion and possible action if necessary to comply with Arizona open meeting law following the executive session regarding annual evaluation of city attorney. Possible actions include, but are not limited to, finding of satisfactory or unsatisfactory performance, salary adjustment, or any uh, direction or action necessary to place an item on a future agenda relating to the city attorney's evaluation, salary adjustment, or employment agreement. Is there any comments uh, before I open the public hearing from the council? <coughs> Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, motion? Yes, Vice Mayor Lane. Based on the favorable outcome of the evaluation of the city attorney, I move to direct city staff to draft an employment contract for the city council's consideration at the next city council meeting. Second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Lane and a second from Councilmember McCoy. Um, I just have one comment for the public sitting there. It seems like we're rapidly going through this and you're like, what are you saying? You're not even saying anything. Um, so this is uh, to comply with uh, the evaluation process for uh, the three employees that work directly for the city council, uh, which is our city manager, uh, Jessica Knudsen, our city attorney, Kelly Gary, and our city magistrate, Judge Kalali. So uh, this will come to our next council meeting um, for public hearings with, with the actual content. This is just giving them uh, direction to give us the content back to us. So with that being said, uh, is there any other comments? Uh, we're ready to vote then. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.5 is approved notice of termination of development agreement as against parcels A, B, and C1 at Gra Grand Island Estates. Ms. Gary. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Back in 1996, Lake Havasu City and MCO Properties entered into a development agreement for the development known as Grand Island Estate, which was supplemented in 1998 by a supplementary development agreement. Since that time, the development has been sold, so there's several different parcels a part of that development, and they've all been sold to different developers. Some parcels are approaching full development, while others remain untouched. According to the terms of the development agreement, as a whole, it automatically terminates in May of 2028 or on 2013 as to any portion of the property which the developer or owner fails to obtain a permit for development for. Um, there's also one more automatic termination provision as to any lot which has been fully subdivided and individually sold or leased or sold to the end purchaser or user. So for the three highlighted parcels above, those three parcels have been terminated from the development agreement by one of those three means. The owner of those three parcels has approached the city and wishes to file this notice of no termination of development agreement. And this is to make it public and clear that they consider themselves to be terminated from that development agreement. Um, city has no, um, city staff has no concerns or issues with that. Um, but I will note that there is still a planned development zoning that sits on top of the whole um, development, and so that isn't changed at all by this action. This action is just recognizing that those three parcels um, have been terminated from just the development agreement. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Do any members of the council have any questions for Ms. Gary? All right. 
Seeing none, uh, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, Vice Mayor Lane. Yes. I move to approve the notice of termination of development agreement against parcels A, B, C1, Grand Island Estates. Second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Lane and a second from Council Member McCoy. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.6 is approve the memorandum of understanding with the Lake Havasu City, excuse me, with the Lake Havasu Police Officers Association. Chief Doyle. Mayor Council, uh, I bring before you the memora memorandum of understanding with the Police Officers Association. This was established back in 2004 by ordinance and uh, each year we sit down with the Police Officers Association and we go over the MOU, any changes, and then once those are agreed upon, we bring it before council. This year, um, uh, more of a significant change to the MOU was any redundant language was removed from the MOU. So in other words, any, any verbiage that was already covered in state statutes, things such as the Police Officers Bill of Rights and other rights that are guaranteed the, uh, the officers and employees under state statute, federal, um, city ordinance, and or uh, city OPPs was removed. Um, another significant change was instead of uh, mandating that we sit down every year, we sit down at request of either the Police Officers Association or by the city. Um, as those of you that have been on council a number of times, you'll note that year after year, when there were no changes, we'd come before you and say, we have the MOU, there are no changes. So in those cases, uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to sit down and go over the MOU except at the request of either the association and or the city. Um, and those are the major changes in the uh, MOU for this year. Okay, thank you. Do any members of the council have any questions for Chief Doyle? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? If you could just state your name for the clerk. I'm uh, Michael Fuller. I am president of the Lake Havasu Police Officers Association. I uh, wasn't really prepared to say anything today, but just thought this would probably be the appropriate time, is that uh, we, ne we negotiated this uh, um, memorandum of understanding, and that comes from uh, an, an old city ordinance, I think you mentioned back in 2004, uh, and how we do meet and confer. Uh, I would just like to make a, a, a statement at this point, I guess, if you will, that uh, it is our association's belief that this city ordinance may be a little outdated, potentially outdated, um, and doesn't uh, maybe uh, incorporate all that the association would like for mutual benefits between the city and the association. Um, I don't have enough time in three minutes to go over everything and what other cities do in their meet and confer and how they uh, uh, interact with their public safety employees specifically, um, which is a reason why most agencies do have meet and confers specific to their public agencies, uh, public safety agencies. Um, so I just would like to maybe uh, just make a statement of potential discussions in the future of uh, updating the meet and confer ordinance that the city has to uh, be mutual beneficial to both the association and the city. Thank you. Thank you. And I should have clarified, at public hearings, it's five minutes. So three minutes for, for a call to the public, five minutes at I'll public hearings. Sorry, but, so you have some time. <laughs> yeah, anything else you want to share with us? Yeah. All right. So um, basically, the, the reason that I'm getting at this, and I'll just share this real quick, uh, brief, is that um, there is a state statute, ARS 23-1411, which is specifically titled Public Safety Employee Organizational Rights Definition. Uh, what you might guess identifies public safety employee organizational rights and specifically states that public safety employees of any city has the right to join an employee association, which for us is the Lake Avenue Police Officers Association, and present proposals and testimony to the governing body of that city, and it does not compel or prohibit in any manner an employee wage or benefit negotiation. Um, and so a lot of cities uh, over the years have uh, enacted meet and confer 
uh, policies uh, to deal directly with their fire and police officer associations. Um, it is not something that you routinely see that involves every city employee, much like our cities does. Um, I am not aware of uh, the other city uh, working groups that do enter into meet and confer other than police and fire. Um, so, you know, again, we're just uh, at this point, you know, there's a lot of be things being proposed in this next year with a positional analysis with, I've uh, heard rumors of um, merit-based and all these things that may potentially need to be discussed and our uh, current wording of the MOU, we have to start this process and, and enter into what we want to see differently in the next year, beginning September 15th, which is very close. Uh, most MO, uh, most uh, meet and confer policies are later in the year prior to the uh, new uh, calendar year, and then they enter into these negotiations uh, during the budget process, typically. Um, and we're well advanced of that and doesn't really give us time to uh, really hit the issues that are needed. So um, again, just uh, want to make note of it and uh, just felt it was a good time since we are talking about this year's uh, meet and confer. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the city council on this matter? Right. Se seeing none, we'll close the, the public hearing. Do any members of the council have any additional questions? I'll entertain a motion. Mayor? Councilmember Dolan? Motion? Yes. I move to approve the memorandum of understanding with the Lake Havasu Police Officers Association and authorize the city manager to execute the memorandum of understanding on behalf of the city. We have a motion from Councilmember Dolan and a second from Councilmember McCoy. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is item 8.7. Approve the memorandum of understanding with the Lake Havasu Professional Firefighters. Chief Davis. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. I'm uh, delighted to get this done this week because next week I will be sliding into Parks and Rec. So uh, <laughs> glad to get this out of the way. Um, this is, I would call, a companion item, obviously, to the last one. The, uh, the uh, conversation with the city manager and the Firefighters Association was very similar. Um, you'll, you'll note probably a significant reduction for the same reasons, going through and eliminating really uh, a lot of, of duplicated language. So what was the uh, MOU of 20 pages of uh, the past is now down to about 12, I think it is. It's essentially removing several articles that, like I said, are really duplication of effort and uh, is essentially uh, the exact same as the Police Officers Association for the most part. So uh, with that, I'll answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Uh, is, does any member of the council have any questions for Chief Davis? Seeing none, well, this is a public hearing. We will open up the public hearing at this time. Does anyone want to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Lane. A motion. Yes. I move to approve the memorandum of understanding with the Lake Havasu Professional Firefighters, effective July 1st, 2019, and authorize the city manager and the fire chief to execute the memorandum of understanding on behalf of Lake Havasu City. Second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Lane and a second from Council Member Koch. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Mayor? Council Member Grove? If I may just ask a question. It's kind of more for clarification because these are companion items. The MOU is, is very similar for both the police department and for the fire department. And they both include the same language basically under Article 8. I don't know if it's the same article in the police department, but 8.1, which is the city conducting a salary survey biennially on even numbered <coughs> years. Um, and there's some other language, you know, you've got to have a minimum of three unit member positions to be determined by the association. Other positions can be surveyed at the discretion of the city. Can I ask, how does the, the biennial requirement um, for both of these MOUs fit into the positional analysis survey that we're doing and in capturing that biennial requirement? This is probably a city manager question. Um, Mr. City Manager, if sure. I may ask you. Uh, Mayor Shee, uh, Councilmember Grote, the, uh, the, while both uh, include an analysis of, uh, of compensation, they're um, 
they are uh, um, independent of, of each other. So whether or not we do a positional analysis, the uh, MOU identifies that uh, we, we do this for the three positions, both in police and fire on, on as, uh, as indicated in, in the MOU. So, but uh, um, what the uh, recent uh, survey shows us that uh, there, there is a need for us to take a look at uh, the positional analysis study, take a look at uh, compensation and job titles and, and uh, our, uh, our compensation structure as a whole. So um, to some degree, the salary survey that you see identified in the MOU um, confirms that we need to we need to we need to fix our system. I, I appreciate that, Mr. City Manager. I was kind of looking in as a point of question about, you know, the um, when it's done, kind of. So you have a biannual survey, but it, it's very specific here. It says on even numbered years, mm -hmm. and we're in 2019. And then my other question: I noticed that neither one of these MOUs, not that it's a detraction or anything. But there's really no language as to when that has to be completed for purposes of inclusion into the municipal budget process. Uh, yeah, um, Mayor uh, she Councilmember Groat, uh, in Section 8.2, it talks about that the uh, the city manager will present that as part of the budget process. So that's the uh, that's the clarity there. You know, that was uh, the, the findings of the survey were sent to Council. Um, was it three weeks ago? Yes, uh, right before the last uh, CIP uh, work session. So that was, uh, um, to me, that, that fit the, uh, the standard that's identified in the MOU as part of that budget process. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. That was my question. Is there any additional questions before we open the public hearing? Did I open the public hearing? I closed the public hearing? Uh, I've done that a lot tonight. <laughs> so, all right, uh, great. Uh, so, we have, oh, we have a motion and a second. All right. <laughs> for, um, any other uh, comments? All right, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 8.8, .8, award the bid for the sale of city-owned parcel L of tract 2208, block 13, located at 3702 Indian Hills Drive to Danny T. and Tracy A. Page Trust, APN 111-18-298. Mr. Smelling. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Uh, staff received an application for the possible purchase of uh, the 3702 Indian Hills in August of 2018. Uh, the property generally located in the southeastern corner of the community. Whoop, wrong way. Um, here you can see uh, in the aerial photo, it's uh, 5.16 acres uh, surrounded by uh, residential properties uh, near the corner of Oro Grande Boulevard and Bonavista Avenue. Uh, this is the track map once again. 5.16 acres, uh, totally surrounded by traditional uh, residential lots. Um, we accepted bids uh, for, uh, through March 27th. Uh, the appraisal came in at 205,000 value. Uh, the, we received one bid on the property. Hold on, let me get into the zoning. Uh, property is zoned R1, uh, property is right here, uh, surrounded on three sides by um, R1. Uh, by multifamily along Bona Vista. Uh, the bid came in at uh, 214400 and we asked council uh, award the bid. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Do any members of the council have any questions for Mr. Smelling? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Coke. Motion. Yes. I move to award the bid for the sale of city real property parcel L of track 2208 block 13 APN 111 18 298 in the amount of $214,400 to Danny T. and Tracy A. Page Trust. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Coke and a second from Councilmember Dolan. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.9 is award bid for the sale of city owned track 2278 block nine lot 10 APN 115-06-158 
located at 1830 Cabana Drive to AP Mortgage Route LLC. Mr. Schmeling. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, once again, staff received an application uh, for the possible purchase of city-owned property at 1830 Cabana Drive. Uh, it was in August as well of 2018. Uh, property is in the northwest portion of the community. Uh, you can see it here. It's just a traditional reg residential lot, uh, about 12,500 square feet. Uh, once again, we accepted bids through March 27th. Uh, there it is on the track map adjacent to a, another city parcel. Uh, here is the zoning. It's, it's, it's zoned R1 as well as all the properties in the surrounding area. Um, the P1 parcel is, is a city-owned parcel that uh, is adjacent to uh, the residential subdivision. Uh, the appraisal came in at 135000 uh, We received one bid, and the bid was at one thirty-seven, eight fifty, and 25 cents and we asked, council, we asked that council award the bid. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions of the council? Um, I have a question maybe of uh, the city manager. If, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, when we sell city-owned properties, uh, what uh, what we do with those funds. Uh, if you could maybe just give an overview for the public's uh, uh, benefit. Sure. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, the funds that are collected through the sale of these properties, which, uh, by the way, the uh, city, we... Uh, we, uh, we go through and identify a list of available properties for a sale. So any member of the public that wants to approach the city and, and look at some of the list of properties that are available for sale, that's, uh, that's something that's, uh, that's ongoing. Um, but the funds that are collected through the sale of these two properties and then other additional properties that have happened in the past and will again in the future are, are used for one-time purchases. And uh, um, we've uh, kind of earmarked some of those funds for the purchase, uh, future purchase of additional property down the road. Um, and so, um, that's just, that's that's where the, the funds are dedicated towards that or any time one time uh, one time expenses moving forward. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the council before I open the public hearing? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Lane. Motion. Yes. I move to award the bid for the sale of City Real Property Track 2278 Block 9 Lot 10 APN 115-06-158 in the amount of $137,850.25 to AP Mortgage Route LLC. Second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Lane and a second from Councilmember McCoy. Is there any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 8.10 is adopt ordinance number 19-1218, approving a major amendment to the Sailing Hawks plan development, PD 01-001, amending phase three, the Cove at Sailing Hawks, track 2364, lot 27, APN 115-29-027A, general development plan reducing the density from 63 lots to 22 residential lots. Mr. Schmeling. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. The 13-acre um, parcel is uh, located in the northwestern portion of the community, um, more specifically at the corner of London Bridge Road and Sailing Hawks Drive. Um, it is a part of what we know as the original Sailing Hawks uh, development, which included 56 acres. Uh, we have the terraces here, which was phase one. Um, we have the ridge, and this is the subject property, the coves. Whoop, I got a better picture. Uh, here's the aerial photo. We have the ridge here, as I was saying, the coves. This is the subject of tonight's discussion in Mesquite Bay. Um, the property was uh, originally approved in 2005 for 44 patio homes and 40 townhomes. Uh, and those townhomes, by the way, were two-story proposed at that time. Um, it was amended in 2013, uh, and it was approved for or changed to uh, 32 patio homes and 31 townhomes. This is the approved plat that's, uh, that's on file right now uh, for that property. Um, the proposal this evening um, is a reduction from the 63 lots that, that were approved in 2013 uh, to 22 single-family lots. Uh, the 
private street, uh, runs along the eastern boundary of the property, um, comes out in a cul-de-sac. It is, if you look at the side-by-side -side comparison, it's very similar to uh, the uh, plat that was approved uh, back in 2013. You can see the extension of the cul-de-sac a little bit here, a little longer. Uh, the removal of this portion of the cul-de-sac, obviously the consolidation of the lots uh, going from uh, 63 down to 22. Uh, very similar street design, uh, very similar building elevations. And um, if you happen to drive by the site, uh, you probably saw a little activity. There is an active grading plan right now, uh, active grading permit right now, uh, based on a grading plan, and it's being graded to the adopted or the approved 2013 uh, grading plan. Um, there were five conditions of approval that were included in your packet. Uh, after lengthy discussion at the Planning Commission, one of those conditions were, was changed. Uh, so I put the, uh, the conditions as modified by the, uh, by the Commission. Uh, five conditions, like I said, uh, four of them remain the same. The one in red was the one that changed as a result of the discussion. Um, the, uh, well, I'll leave it at that. That concludes uh, my portion of the presentation. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Do any members of the council have any questions for Mr. Schmeling? I believe the applicants here, do they want to make a presentation? Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, my name is Michael Gordon, the applicant on this project with Desert Land Group, uh, here on behalf of the owner tonight. Um, Stuart did a good job of, of kind of giving a summary of kind of where it's at today. Um, I, we put together just a little slideshow. I'm going to share just a little bit more history on this project. Uh, as some of you may know, this goes back a long way, obviously, the original project. Sailing Hawks itself is in, encompasses five different neighborhoods that were originally planned as part of a master plan community back in the early 2000s. Um, in 2005, like Stuart mentioned, um, the project was entitled and approved for 44 uh, two-story, or I'm sorry, 44 single-story patio homes and, and 42-story townhomes. Um, one thing I'm just going to talk a little bit about because it's important to the conditions you saw is the, the lot elevations. Um, at that time, lot elevations were assigned to all of the lots, all of the upper elevation lots, the lots that affect the neighboring property to the east, which is the ridge project that is developed. Um, this project, too, um, for your information, again, five neighborhoods in Sailing Hawks, three of which have been developed or are finishing development. This will be the fourth that has started development with the grading that Stuart mentioned. There's one fifth piece off to the north or to the south that has not yet broken ground. This sits down along Leonard Bridge Road with the Ridge townhomes uh, adjacent to the east. Again, that was the original approval. Um, when the economy changed, uh, the property changed hands. Uh, and after that, back in ultimately in 2014, it went through a plan development amendment as well. Uh, as Stuart mentioned, kind of just some slight modifications to that original plan. Um, still had a combination of the small lots and the larger or and the and the single family patio home type lots still had 63 total sites um, and if you compare elevations that were approved with that approval very consistent elevation wise with the original elevations that were uh, approved that plan when it was approved in 2014 um, it, it was approved the final plat has been approved by council and at the time the improvement drawings, the, the water sewer streets and all the improvement drawings were also engineered, presented and received approval by staff. Uh, recently, uh, the owner did pull, um, again, flash forward now, even a new owner from when the 2014 plan um, was approved. The new owner has since pulled the uh, permits and started the grading process on the property. When that started, it kind of triggered a, a chain reaction of some concern with neighbors over potential views and potential lot elevations. Um, during that process, we had um, a number of discussions with neighbors. Uh, and at the same time, looking at the plan that was approved and the plans that were pulled, um, the, the high density project that was proposed and, and approved at the time was 63 units, really didn't make the most sense. Um, because you had really, and I'll compare it to one of the other neighborhoods in Sailing Hawks, the Mesquite Bay neighborhood to the south. 
uh, was a very similar plan to the, the currently approved plan, combination of really small lots and really big lots. Well, it didn't build out that way. It ended up, you know, lots got tied together, lots got modified, lots got changed, and uh, you had a significant reduction of density probably the wrong way by, you know, consolidation over time and, and moving things around. Uh, as, the, as the owner started working on this project, realized that that's probably where this was going to end up if, if they just proceeded with building it as is, that lots would end up getting tied together. Um, the little tiny lots with zero setbacks didn't make much sense, stuffed in the middle of everything else. And so uh, as, as discussion started with the neighbors, it also made sense to bring this forward and talk about an overall change to the plan. And that's what's before you tonight is, is a, a proposed PD amendment that encompasses those changes along with some um, changes that were made elevation wise to, to be good neighbors and satisfy <coughs> neighbors concerns. But like you see on the screen right now, it's a major reduction from 63 units down to 22 units instead of a combination of little homes and big homes and st everything stuffed really close together. The plan now has 22 large single family lots. So you have, you know, yes, you'll have larger homes, but you'll have significantly less traffic, significantly less rooftops, and things will be spread out a little bit more. Uh, as Stuart mentioned, uh, when, you, when you look at the plan side by side, the street configuration, the, the general layout and grading of the sites are still the same. There's a lower terrace along London Bridge Road. There's an upper terrace that adjoins the, the ridge project to the east. Um, so that's the plan that uh, the owner would like to move forward with, and that's what, what's, what's before you today. Um, when we first went down this path and presented the, prop, the proposed amendment to the neighbors, we had a public meeting at the, at the townhome at the Ridge Project next door. Um, in general, um, the, the neighbors were pleased with the change in the plan in terms of the, the reduction in density and then the new configuration of what's proposed. Um, it did trigger a lot of discussion over elevations, over lot grades. Um, it triggered some discussion that uh, was uh, discussed in great detail at the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, last month. Um, and really what it, it, it started to point out is that some folks felt that grades maybe were different than what was approved. Um, along the way, uh, the intent of, of this owner was to try and build a better community, try and fit in the neighborhood, and try and you know do what they could to accommodate those concerns. At the end of the day, and we can get into to the details of this if we need to, after working with the neighbors, um, really where we ended up is, is a couple of things. Um, we reduced the density, obviously, as mentioned. We lowered the elevations of all of the upper terrace lots from the approved elevations. Got lowered anywhere from a foot to two and a half feet. Um, and that was really to try and target uh, a baseline elevation that some of the neighbors felt that they um, were, or that these properties were required to be at the end of the day um, really wasn't, isn't the case, and if you really look back at the specifics, but nonetheless, we wanted to try and, and meet that if we could without creating negative impacts to this proposed development. We were able to do that, um, to, do, to, to achieve most of that, and that's what's before you today. Um, at the same time, we also adjusted a few lot line angles to line up with the angle of the lots of the existing townhomes, which allows for better view corridors, if you will, or better view angles between the future homes that will be developed and the existing homes. Um, so that's kind of a summary of where we were at. Since the last council, or since the planning and zoning meeting, um, it obviously was, was approved at planning and zoning. There has been some continued uh, uh, discussion with the neighbors. Stuart, if you don't mind, maybe, yeah, just to kind of compare uh, what, what was approved before versus what's in front of you today. Um, you can see on that upper terrace, uh, the lots on the, what would be the south end, were lowered around two and a half feet. The lots across the middle, which are the ones adjacent to a majority of the ridge townhomes on the bottom portion of the screen, were lowered an average of 1.2 feet. And the lots out on that, uh, that cul-de-sac to the west were lowered an average of a foot. Um, those grades, uh, the grades that immediately adjoin the ridge townhome folks, uh, really achieved the grades that they were hoping that they would be getting out of it. Um, but the grades uh, in the cul-de-stack were still higher than what they had hoped for. Nonetheless, it, it was less than what was is currently approved and what the current plans have approval for. Um, since that meeting, again, there's been some discussions. I think uh, the developer of the Ridge will probably speak tonight. 
um, at that meeting, it was inferred that potentially, you know, at this point we've done a lot and uh, to, to try and accommodate their concerns and their needs, both on elevation as well as putting a maximum, and that was the condition Stuart pointed to, uh, that was added, putting a maximum build height on those lots, something that wasn't ever in any of the previous approvals uh, to, to maximize the build height above those elevations to 15 feet. Um, it was something that was discussed with the neighbors. It was something that was agreed to and committed to. And so at the planning and zoning meeting, we put that condition on these lots as well. Um, since then, there, there still has been some concern or, or some rumblings of the neighbors. It was discussed at planning and zoning about, well, what if, what if we, the neighbors, helped with the cost of lowering some of those lots? Um, and so there are some discussions ongoing uh, on potentially doing a few other things to satisfy their concerns if they're willing to uh, assist with the cost of some of those things. But today we're before you with the plan that was presented and approved at planning and zoning. Uh, we intend to uh, try and move forward with that plan. And if, and, and I'll let uh, Mr. Atkins speak to this if he wishes, um, there is an agreement that has been um, put together. It's not signed and executed to where they're going to potentially assist with some costs to lower a few of the lots that are still of a concern. Um, the applicant is on board with that if they're willing to cover those costs. So if we arrive at that, we will put additional restrictions on what would be approved tonight. That's something that would be deed restricted on the property, would be presented to uh, staff if and when that comes to fruition to further lower a few of the lots. Um, that's kind of a, as quick a summary of everything as I can put together. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, if there are any. Do any members of the council have any questions for Mr. Gordon? Just, just want to clarify. So these, this comparison plan, these elevations are lower than what the previously approved plan was. Correct. Okay. So all of the grades that are on the, the the PD amendment that's before you has specific lot grades for every single one of the 22 lots, all of which on the upper terrace elevation, the ones that that had previous lot elevations assigned in 2005, also reassigned in 2014. All of these grades are lower than the previous approvals and the current approvals. Okay, thank you. That's member Grove. Um, may I inquire, I mean, you made a lot of um, changes from what was originally approved and, uh, you know, the lowering anywhere from a foot to two and a half feet, that probably worked out pretty well for the people who were concerned about their view corridors. Mm -hmm. And then you have a 35% reduction. Um, did you get any, um, or what was your sense of what they were feeling about their view quarters. Now, the f fact is nobody's actually entitled to that, but you're working collaborative, yeah. collaboratively with them to preserve that for them, and there's a 35% reduction here, which seems to benefit, you know, what the development probably would ultimately become anyways, but also give those landowners some certainty right. Um, right. for their investments, which are significant investments. Absolutely. And so what was your sense of how that was received? Mm. Um, I think, like I mentioned before, when we had the public meeting and most of the residents of the Ridge were in the room, we had a very good open conversation about that. I think they were all in favor of the reduced density of, you know, um, the proposed plan. Obviously, having the proposed plan in front of their homes versus what's currently approved is, is probably a lot less impactful long term. And obviously, anything lower is going to be less impactful to the views and the values. Um, there, there was some... A lot of this just stems from what they were, what they were told, sold, felt um, from previous discussions, from things in staff reports, from things in past uh, discussions that they felt um, the homes in front of them would never be beyond a certain elevation in height. When you look back at which we did at the planning and zoning meeting, look back at the approved elevations that were pretty clear in 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 city records and stuff. Um, it's not exactly that cut and dry that they were hoping it was. Uh, so again, trying to be a good neighbor, trying to come into a piece of property that's been sitting vacant for a long time. The goal of the owner is to get in here, get this thing built. It's a beautiful setting right along the shore of the lake. We want to get in, get it done. It's not good for anybody to end up, you know, uh, going back and forth and having a lot of concern in the public over uh, this or that. So the goal was to just try and be a good neighbor, come in, make some concessions if we could, because for us, we still had to come through this process to change the plan. We wanted to reduce the density. We wanted to create a better plan for the project. We had to come before a public hearing to do that. And so obviously, if we could accommodate some of their concerns to make this process go easier, that was our goal. 
May I follow up, Mr. Mayor? Yes. One quick question. So I really appreciate all the work that your group has done to try and uh, reach out to those landowners, uh, those homeowners, and, and explain all these different changes because, you know, they would be properly concerned. I understand where they're coming from. Um, do you have a sense of, I mean, I think I heard you say 15-foot maximum height from, from the um, new elevations that we're proposing here. Mm -hmm. what, if you hadn't done the, the lowering of these elevations and had just gone with what was already approved, what was the maximum elevation? Do you, do you recall that, sir? Well, the underlying zoning for this parcel is it's an R4 PD, and R4 has a maximum build height of 30 feet. So it could have been anywhere from 30 to 32 and a half feet higher, the roofs that they would have been looking at, essentially. Oh, wait, minus the 15. Correct. Okay, got yes. it, right. Yes. So that's that's a, that's a significant change. I mean, I can't visualize that, but did you have some sort of visual presentation that you provided to them? Um, no, we just talked through the elevations, and, I mean, they could stand on their patios and look down at the lots that were being graded. Again, the grading permit was pulled, and the grades of this plan are – uh, the proposed plan are very similar to what was being graded. So it was pretty visual in the field what those impacts, you know, might be at 15 or more feet. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate You're that. You're welcome. All right. Are there any other questions of Mr. Gordon? All right. This is a public hearing. We will open the public hearing at this time. If anyone would like to address the City Council on this matter, you can just make your way up to the podium, uh, state your name for the record. No, does anyone want to address the city council? I thought this was the item. I thought this is what everyone was sitting in the room for. <laughs> and now you just let me down. All right. Yeah, Mr. Atkins, if you just uh, state your name. Just because uh, you're looking for somebody yeah. to speak, I'll come up. My name is Ryan Atkins. I'm the developer of the Ridge at Sailing Hawks Above. Uh, as you all discussed, there was some relatively heated discussions regarding elevations over the course of this uh, project rezoning or restructuring. Uh, the developers below have been very helpful. They've been working well with us. Uh, our homeowners are about as satisfied as I believe they could be. Uh, as Michael, uh, Mr. Gordon did mention, we do have some other agreements we're working on in place to, to help out even more that uh, the development uh, group below seems to be willing to work with, and we appreciate that. Uh, all in all, we're in, in support of the current plan. We have, we have nothing to argue about with that. As I think it's an improvement, and it'll be nice to see something moving forward. You know, our homeowners have been fortunate to, for them uh, over the last several years that nothing's happened. They've had the pristine, unmolested view over the years. And, of course, everybody hoped that might last forever, which we all know wasn't the case. So to see something moving forward and at least know what is happening now and to know the elevations that we're working with and that the, the neighbors have been good neighbors and been working with us, uh, we appreciate that and we support the project at this point. Excellent. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the City Council on this matter? All right. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Um, Mayor? Yes. Councilmember Dolan? Since it sounds like everyone's patiently waiting to hear about the um, water booster stations, I would like to make a motion. <laughs> Yes. All right, yeah. I move to adopt ordinance number 19-1218, approving a major amendment to the Sailing Hawks plan development 01-001, the coves at Sailing Hawks, amending the general development plan, reducing the density from 63 lots to 22 residential lots. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to second the motion and offer just a small snippet and observation. I've, I've lived in communities and worked on city council and communities where getting developers to develop is like getting blood from a stone. It's really hard. And here, we have a lot of development that's taking place on, and I'm actually watching developers work with other developers in the community to do the right thing. And so I just take my hat off, and I think it's fabulous. Thank you. We have a motion from Councilmember Dolan and a second from Councilmember Grote. Uh, before we go to vote, I would just like to uh, uh, thank the Planning and Zoning Commission. They did a really, uh, really great job. I attended that uh, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission to, to really work things uh, through. And also, uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, to you and, and, and your group, thank you for, for working with the neighbors. Um, it's, it's definitely appreciated, and it's how we can all work together to get, do good things for Lake Havasu to move us forward. So thank you. Uh, with that, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we're ready to vote.
the technology it does this to us sometimes. So slow down, you're moving too fast. I'm sorry, we'll have to do a verbal vote. Okay, do all dispersed. at once or roll call or just um, all? We can do all, all at once? Okay. okay. All, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. Oh, geez, I'm glad I remember that, <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, we're gonna move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, congratulations uh, to the developer. Uh, we're gonna switch um, and go to item 8.8. .8 Point one two first, so 8.12, uh, and then we'll come back and do 8.11. So the first uh, item that we're going to talk about again is 8.12, so if you want to properly get to where you're at on your agenda, it's a ward bid for the Water Booster Station 1C Replacement and take Tank Rehabilitation Project at Technology Construction. Mr. Salisbury? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, um, before you tonight, I'm here to bring the construction contract for the Water Booster Station and Tank Replacement. Uh, the pump station was constructed in 1972. Uh, the steel tank was constructed in 1980. The uh, last coating uh, operation was performed in 2005. Uh, this tank helps provide water to the southern third of the city. Uh, the it involves a replacement and upgrade of the pump station, rehabilitation and recoating of a one million gallon tank. Uh, the pump station and mechanical components are reaching the end of their serviceable life. The interior and exterior coating of tank uh, S1C24 are deteriorating and need replacement. Uh, it's a 300-day contract duration from May 2019 to March 2020. Uh, the bid opening was held on April 17th. The low bidder was Technology Construction Inc. Uh, for $3,479,575. Uh, this is the portion of the city that this tank and booster station serve. Um, so it's a very large portion of the city. This is the site, this is the actual tank that we will be recoding. You can see the booster station in the middle, that's gonna get reconfigured and moved over to the southwest side of tank S1C25. Uh, this is the current condition of some of the roof rafters inside the tank. This is a condition of the walls. As you can see, it's fairly deteriorated. There's also a center column, if you look at the left uh, upper picture, um, we're not sure if it was, we think it was built like this, uh, but we need to fix that up. So that's not plumb at all and is not as strong as it could be. And the lower right portion is the con uh, condition of the floor and the lower walls. Uh, this is the current configuration of the pumps out there. Uh, we have uh, two electric pumps and one motor driven pump. Uh, this motor is older technology. If you notice something about it, something you probably see outside your home, it's gas driven. Uh, so this creates a hazard in the yard and um, we need to uh, update this. We can run all of these pumps off of a single generator if we switch them over to electric rather than having this one backup. Uh, at this time, I'd ha be happy to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so it's one third of the city is is covered by this one yes sir. Pump? wow yeah, that's huge and how many tanks we have we have like 12 how many tanks do we have total uh 12 or 16? 12 or something 12. yeah 26 that's, crazy, that, yes, that, yes, uh, that. that's a workhorse yeah all right um any questions uh, of the council um for mr salisbury mr grow mr mayor i i will try to keep it short because yeah, you know I how i love water infrastructure so. you know <laughs> but um can you, can you speak to a little bit, you know, we saw a little bit of rust happening up in the rafters, obviously, and the ventilation system that we have in this tank and uh, what that looks like. Sure, let me go back a few slides. Okay, the uh, ventilation system are just simple openings that we have and, and around the top and at the top. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, this is where the chlorine and stuff accumulates, so this is where the, the bulk of the attack happens, so to speak, the chemical attack. Um, and uh, the stuff below the surface of the water uh, doesn't corrode quite as fast, but uh, this is, it's, it's pretty standard construction uh, for one of these tanks. Uh, 
and and at the center, in the middle, where yeah. the non-plum, what is that? What do we got up there? Uh, I couldn't see it. I wanted to look at that, and I was there, but I can see there's, I can see from the overhead. Yeah, you can see it yeah. uh, here. There's there's a, a, a vent at the top of these. Okay. Does that um, just out of curiosity, does that pull it? Hook into the immediacy of that vent around it. Maybe that's why it was non-plum. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yes, we did take the top off and uh, 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 take a look at that. Uh, we feel it was constructed that way with the, the unplumbed condition. Um, the, we're, we're not sure why. It was constructed back in the 70s. So. You, didn't, you couldn't deduce the actual reason for that. All right, so we move this over to um, taking a natural gas off. We're going to have elect – that will be fed in by – Electricity is not going to be like a photovoltaic setup out there. That's just going to be standard electricity we get yes, off sir. off the grid. Okay. And do you have a idea how long it'll take them to do this? Three hundred days is the contract duration. Three hundred days. Yes, sir. Um, do you do you have a sense of how much time there will actually be people in and out of there? Because some of that's going to be project management days and meetings and this and that and the other. Uh, as far as the actual coding portion. Those yeah, I'm just looking at what it's going to be like for the neighbors. Obviously, there's a lot of neighbors. Oh, yes, sir. Um, yeah. The coding portion would probably be a couple of months' worth of it, and then reconstructing the actual components uh, will take much longer. The digging the, the, of the pipes and uh, reconfiguring the uh, pump station. The, uh, we're actually moving the pump station, so the loud whir you hear from the mechanical components, over to this uh, western portion uh, that you can see right here. Uh, this moves it further away from homes, so there will be less noise impact uh, from the operation day to day uh, to the uh, residents. Then. Well, good. So, so we'll probably get quieter pumps, and we're going to place them further away from residents so it's 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 quieter for them because these things do make noise. Exactly. Okay. And ballpark, just out of curiosity, this will be my last question on this one, I promise, Mr. Mayor. But, we, you know, like, this is a big tank, mm -hmm. and it feeds a huge, huge chunk of our city, uh, including my own part where I live, you know. So what I was just curious about, this is kind of a trivia question. It's not really germane to this, but uh, um, how many days' supply of water would that be for the area that it serves if that tank's full? Roughly, ballpark. You know, I mean, you weren't ready for that question, and you probably didn't need to be, but in your expertise. Uh, probably uh, roughly about a week, two weeks. 20%? 20% of it, of the, the, the area is what it serves. Okay, I'll, I'll go with that. I'll have to do some mental gymnastics on that answer, but thank you very much. Thanks. That's it. I All promise right, I will keep it short, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Councilmember Grote, in our companion item, our next item, it's it's five weeks total for the coding area, and uh, we'll address that in our next item. Is there any other uh, comments from Council? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the City Council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Dolan. Motion. Yes. I'll show them the right one. I move to award the base bid, Schedule A, B, and D, for the Water Booster Station 1C Replacement and Tank Rehabilitation Project to Technology Construction, Incorporated. I'll gladly second the motion, Mr. Mayor. We have a motion from Councilmember Dolan and a second from Councilmember Grote. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We'll see if we're ready to vote. Oh, it's looking good. Yeah, looking good. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. All right, now we'll move back to item 8.11, and that's award agreement for professional services construction management to Atkins North America Inc. for the water booster station 1C replacement and tank rehabilitation project. Mr. Salisbury. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, this contract is uh, for the construction management portion of the construction of this tank. Uh, it'll include professional services, um, full time inspection, post design engineering support, and contract closeout services uh, for the duration of the replacement and upgrade of the pump station and the rehabilitation and recoding of the 1 million gallon tank. Uh, this is also for 300 calendar days. 
uh, for $437,981. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Do any members of the council have any questions? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, motion. Yes, Councilmember McCoy. I move to award the agreement for professional services to Atkins North America Inc. for the water booster station 1C replacement and tank rehabilitation project. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember McCoy and a second from Councilmember Koch. Is there any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. All right, uh, the next item on our agenda is item nine, current events. Do any of the council members have any council committee reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to um, our final call to the public. Would anyone like to address the city council at the call to the public on any matter within our jurisdiction? We're back to three minutes now. Call to the public's three minutes, <laughs> public hearing's five minutes. <laughs> All right, uh, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Number 11, do any council members have any, oh, excuse me, number 11 is our future meetings. Uh, our next meeting is this Thursday, May 16th, 2019 at 9 a.m. That's a budget work session, so that'll be here in the council chambers this Thursday, 9 a.m. It'll be televised, or we encourage you to participate and, and join us for that conversation. Um, and then on Tuesday, May 28th, 2019 at 6 p.m. is our next regular meeting, again, here in the council chambers. Item 12 is uh, future discussion items. Does any council member have any future discussion items? Seeing none, we'll move on to 13. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We have a motion and a second. We are adjourned. Thanks for being here.